Is Donald Trump cementing his legacy in the Republican National Committee for the next couple decades to come? I'll give you an update on three of Donald Trump's court cases and the one in New York led by Letitia James gets downright cruel against Donald Trump's business and Donald Trump's family. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out because it tells YouTube to spread this broadcast and share it with other people. So if you love the channel, hit that like button because that is the best way to contribute to our cause. And thank you for being here tonight. I also want to thank today's video sponsor, Mr. 1920 Soap, the best soap in the world. And I'll tell you how to use code AMAZING down below to get 15% off tonight. All right, let's jump into the news. The Republican National Committee, the RNC, is undergoing a transformative restructuring under new leadership led by Michael Watley and also President Donald Trump's uh, daughter-in-law, Laura Trump signaling a fresh direction for the Republican Party. Approximately 60 staff members are expected to be fired or let go, including senior personnel. They're being replaced so that new blood can be brought into the Republican uh, Party, the RNC, that will be more focused on an America First agenda. Now, this strategic move aims to streamline operations enhance efficiency and strengthen unity within the party. It also seeks to avoid three election cycles of losses under Rona McDaniel. Uh, and so that is one of the big reasons for the shakeup. Now, by prioritizing loyalty and synergy between the RNC and the Trump campaign, the party can better focus on winning the upcoming uh, 2024 election. The proactive approach demonstrates the RNC's commitment to winning, adaptability, and effectiveness. Now, do you think that this is a good move or a bad move? The Republican Party being basically reinvented around this America First agenda. If you believe it is good, I would love for you to type good. And if you think it's bad, go ahead and type bad. I definitely want to hear from you guys. I love, love, love reading your comments. All right, let me say hello to some people. Michael, Adam, Junior. Oh my gosh, whoa, Pam, David, uh, Kay. Whoa, it's moving a little bit too fast for even my brain to read. Okay, now uh, thank you guys for that. The House has officially passed a bill which seeks to ban TikTok with 352 yeses to 61 noes. While I love free speech, I do understand the House wanting to ban this because they are worried about national security issues. For those unaware, TikTok is owned and operated in communist China, which means that the government could be using this as a tool to spread misinformation or influence peddling. It could also be used just to gather significant amounts of data on the American people. Now, I don't know that TikTok is as evil as politicians are saying, but I do think that there are some national security issues that they need to look into. Now, the bill also has to pass in the Senate. Many are saying pass this bill immediately, while others are saying, wait a minute, guys, I think we should do more research and really understand what this is. With the Senate being led by the Democrats, um, I don't know that this is going to pass as quickly as it did over in the House. Democrat Representative AOC voiced concern before the bill was passed in the House claiming that it was passed way too fast. Uh, Republican Senator John Cornyn of Texas agreed with AOC. He said, I think it's more than likely that we will take up their bill and amend it and say, we've come up with some areas we think need improvement. We do things slowly over here and this is going to take some time. Now, let me know in the comments, do you think that uh, TikTok is good and fun and entertaining? Or do you think that it is a national security issue? If you want to ban it, so I want you to write ban. If, and if you want to keep it, I want you to write keep. All right. Now, uh, with all of the talk about TikTok floating around today, I figured it was also important to cover an example of how China tries to use our own people against us. I was recently um, uh, discovered that the Obama's former attorney general, Loretta Lynch, was paid by a Chinese drone maker to help them get removed 
from a list of Chinese military companies. Now, uh, Loretta Lynch reportedly lobbied the Department of Defense on their behalf, seemingly putting China's interests ahead of the United States of America. But this really shouldn't surprise you. Uh, Republican or Democrat, there are many people in Congress that they just believe in selling out our country. Uh, if they can get paid for a favor, then they do that favor. And unfortunately, that is common and it's within both parties. Now, while you'd think this would be illegal, it's not, as long as you report that you've done it. Republican uh, Senator Jim Risch commented on this finding, stating it's appalling that former senior U.S. officials use their connections to serve the interests of U.S. adversaries. Now, do you think that this is kosher? Should this be allowed? I, I don't know why anybody would want to benefit a nation that is literally trying to destroy the United States of America. But then again, I've never been bribed with millions of dollars and I don't serve in Congress. Now, unfortunately for us, our current president doesn't seem concerned about foreign threats. While speaking to the press at an airfield, President Biden claimed that he hopes the border issue will fix itself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry, I thought I could hold it together. He's hoping that the border issue will fix itself despite having executive authority to fix it himself. Now, when Biden took office, he used executive power to reverse all of the Donald Trump policies, which has led to a massive increase in illegal immigration. Now, the president is the most powerful um, person in the country, yet he doesn't plan to do anything when it comes to actually fixing the border. The only thing he's done so far was blame Donald J. Trump, but we can all see through the BS and we know that it's wrong. Sometimes I feel like I need to wash my brain. And when I do, I use Mr. 1920 soap. You guys, I absolutely love this soap. This is their, oh no, this is their newest scent, Wanted Outlaw. This used to be pipe tobacco. It smells so good. I absolutely love the smell of this one. And look at this, look at this big, beautiful, chunky bar of house-made soap. Isn't that beautiful? They've got all kinds of scents. They have cool water and black soap and morning oats and just so many refreshing uh, scents. And if you use code AMAZING, you're going to get 15% off and I'm going to leave a link down below. I love that soap. I use it every single day. All right. Now, House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer was just notified that Hunter Biden will not be testifying before Congress. Hunter Biden is refusing to testify publicly and uh, said he's already testified behind closed doors and refuses to come in. Now, James Comer stated, now that one public hearing has been offered alongside his business associates that he worked with for years, he's refusing to come in. Let me know in the comments, what is Hunter Biden hiding? Why is he refusing to testify? I, I would like to know what you guys think about that. Now, James Comer's statement didn't end there. He also gave some insight into what committee was able to gather during the closed door testimony of President Biden's son. Comer stated, during our deposition and interview phase of our investigation, Hunter Biden confirmed key evidence, including evidence that his father, President Joe Biden, lied to the American people about his family's business dealings and in fact attended meetings, spoke on speakerphone and had coffee with foreign business associates who collectively funneled millions of dollars to the Bidens. So they're going to continue to dig in. Uh, my guess is Hunter knows that he could say something that would get daddy in trouble and that is why he doesn't want to testify. Now in the latest twist, Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee of Georgia has just dismissed six charges in the election interference case against Donald Trump and his co-defendants. Unfortunately, this isn't a big, as big of a win as some commentators made it out to be. Not only does this decision have nothing to do with Fannie Willis being disqualified, but it was made purely because the prosecution did not mount part of their case correctly. Judge McAfee stated, the court's concern is less that the state has failed to allege sufficient conduct of the defendant. In fact, it has alleged an abundance 
However, the lack of detail concerning an essential legal element is, in the undersigned opinion, fatal. So they're going to remove that. Now, Trump is still on trial. And as of right now, Fonnie Willis has not been disqualified, although we are expecting that disqualification to come out any day now. My guess is that a different uh, counsel will be uh, inserted and this case will continue and I'll continue to uh, keep you updated on that. Now, the six charges dropped relate to Trump and his co-defendants allegedly asking officials in Georgia to violate their oath of office. However, prosecutors failed to actually specify which part of the constitutions were being violated, which was a rookie mistake that got the charges tossed out of court. Now, CNN legal analyst Ellie Honig commented on the current chaos, claiming that the prosecution should be embarrassed. He stated, it's a screw up by prosecutors when you bring a charge and then a judge throws it out before it's even gone to trial. This is an embarrassment for Fonnie Willis, for her team, and it is a huge win for Trump, but it's not the ultimate win. It's basically like the war is ongoing, but we just won a major battle. Also, Donald Trump will be in court in Florida tomorrow to continue the classified documents case brought by Joe Biden, excuse me, uh, uh, brought by Jack Smith. Jack Smith says Trump broke the Espionage Act by having these documents in his possession. Trump's legal team says Trump did not sell government secrets or endanger anyone. So bringing the Espionage Act against a former president is absolutely ridiculous. Now, Trump's lawyers also argue that all the documents were in fact moved from the White House to Mar-a-Lago while Donald Trump was still president of the United States. Under the Presidential Records Act, he has a right to documents that he obtained during his presidency. Now, I, I want to know from you guys, um, do you, <laughs> this is crazy, do you guys think that Donald Trump is a spy? Espionage? Selling secrets? Are they crazy? These guys think that Donald Trump was selling secrets? I mean, this is crazy that they're literally, they're, they're trying to pitch him as uh, treason and selling out your country, betraying your country, selling secrets from your country to an enemy. This is absolute craziness. It's craziness. Okay, now Jack Smith alluded that Donald Trump's biggest crime is he believes he is above the law, when in fact it's obvious that Donald Trump believes he is under the law under the Presidential Records Act, which literally was created to protect presidents after they leave office. But Joe Biden was never president while he had documents. He was a senator. He was a vice president. And they literally told him, hey, keep being president. You've done absolutely wrong, nothing wrong. And now they're saying that, that uh, Donald Trump committed treason, that he... That he espionage? I mean, these are like really, really crazy charges that they're trying to bring against Donald Trump. All right. Now, up in New York, Letitia James and her team argued last night that Donald Trump should be forced to pay $464 million right now, regardless of how damaging, damaging it is to his family or to his business. The Letitia James attorney argued that Donald Trump should be blocked from taking loans from people in New York, banks in New York, or against properties in New York. You guys, let, let's call this what it is. This is a shakedown. They've even gone as far as trying to harass the bond company that has stepped forward to help Donald Trump. These people have no shame. They want Donald Trump dead or bankrupt or preferably both. I mean, it's it's crazy. He can't get any help in New York. And the one bond company that steps forward to help him, they're now harassing them. They're, they're, they're saying, we're going to bring, we're going to bring evidence against you. We're going to shake you down as well. This is really sad to say. I mean, I 
I hate reporting on this stuff because it's just so obvious that this is, it's a two-tier system against Donald Trump and for Joe Biden. All right, now some good news. Don't leave me just yet. Donald Trump is officially the Republican nominee for president of the United States in 2024. He has 1,215 delegates. Ron DeSantis got nine. I mean, like, what a difference, right? Shortly after, Trump posted a video where he stated, the Republican National Committee has just declared us the official nominee, which is a big deal. But most importantly, we now have to go on to victory because our country is in serious trouble. All right, now in regards to Gaza, Representative Elon Omar is back in headlines for suggesting that Israel is at fault for the failed negotiation between Israel and Hamas. When responding to a video showing White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan claiming that a ceasefire is on the table for Hamas, Omar stated, Hamas showed up to Egypt. It's my understanding for the negotiations. It was Israel that refused to send negotiators to the table. You have to remember that a ceasefire is not something that happens magically. While she is correct here, she's not mentioning that Hamas turned down a very fair deal, which would have brought home hostages and issued a humanitarian pause. Israel likely didn't show up because Hamas was not acting in good faith. Anything that doesn't lead to the release of Israeli hostages is not a deal that Israel is willing to entertain. And that's why this whole deal fell apart. Now with a ceasefire out of the equation for now, four US army ships have departed on a journey to help the people of Gaza. The, ship, uh, the ships have all the necessary equipment to construct the seaport that Biden promised during his State of the Union address but the estimated arrival time is at least a month from today. Now, according to the Pentagon, 1,000 US troops will be involved in building that dock, and they're just hoping and praying that Hamas doesn't fire on these 1,000 uh, US soldiers while they're trying to help the people of Palestine get food, get water, blankets, medical equipment, uh, resources, supplies. They are going above and beyond to be helpful. But as of right now, um, Hamas has not said whether they're going to allow the U.S. military and all of this taxpayer-funded uh, assistance to actually get to the people of Palestine. I mean, how sad would it be? How sad would it be, guys, if we send over all of these ships, all of these resources and supplies a thousand of our brave men and women in, in uh, uniform, and then they get attacked. I, I really hope Hamas is smarter than this, uh, but I don't know. It, it's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens. All right. Now, this is my update for today. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight. I love you guys. I want to remind you that you are amazing. Please, as a, as a favor to me, give this video a like. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Become uh, we're uh, one of the 1.5 million people that are seeking truth. Uh, we want to get to 1.6 million. Uh, just so you know, I'm getting a brand new computer, everything. I apologize if this has been blurry or shaky or not as good. It, it just crapped out on me and I'm doing my best to get a good one in here so that I can continue to be your favorite source of truth here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Uh, have a good night. Check out that link down below. Mr. 1920 Soap supported me when other companies abandoned me for telling you the truth about Donald Trump, our country, the U.S. dollar, and our enemies abroad. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you on the next video.